And that's really the, what is at the heart of uh, Load. The idea that the world needs a return to honest money. Honest money that is backed by a precious metals asset. Please join us for our next live stream Sunday, June 14th at 9 p.m. Eastern. We'll go over current events, past guests, and of course, gold and silver news. Once again, our next live stream will be June 14th, 9 p.m. Eastern. See you then. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Silver Bullion Television, SBTV. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Once again, housekeeping aside, if you are new to this channel or you have not already done so, please do subscribe, click on the bell to be notified on new updates, and give us a thumbs up. If you like what we do, we really do appreciate your support. Nicholas Proutin, our guest today. Nick is the brand ambassador of the Load Token Project. Nick is also the host of the AGX Media YouTube channel, where he provides updates on Load Token and Precious Metals News. And we are happy to have him join us today. It's time to saddle up and silver up for Nick Proutin. Nick, welcome to SBTV. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, and I'm extremely excited to be a, on the channel with you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming by. We're, we're happy to have you, and we got a lot of people that keep asking about load, so we, we're glad you had time for us. Nick, we've, we've heard about the load token project in our conversations with David Morgan in the past, and I understand that he's an ambassador for the load token but before we get into the details of Load, can you share with us about your background and how you got involved with Load? For sure. So I've been a marketer in some capacity uh, in the technology space for almost a decade now. Uh, you know, I've worked in cybersecurity, uh, you know, using chat softwares that prevent things like pedophilia and online games, uh, you know, ranging to uh, advertising technology all the way into blockchain when it started to blow up in 2017. And I've actually been a part of a couple of different blockchain projects. Um, unfortunately, they didn't take off the way that you always hope, but um, it became apparent to me that working in this space was something that I wanted to pursue in a more long-term fashion. And when I came across uh, the load project, uh, it seemed like this was something that I had to be a part of. You know, uh, I, one of the biggest flaws of a lot of the cryptocurrency projects um, in, in the, that 2017 bubble that we were in was that there was a lot of heart, you know, there would be like, oh yeah, it's, it's your laundry on the blockchain. But, you know, there wasn't a lot of um, real value to be found um, from, from these projects, not to discredit, you know, people's ambitions in any way. But with a project like Load, um, the value is so, uh, at least to me, obvious and the need is so real that uh, I knew instantly that this is going to be something that that goes the distance. So, um, yeah, as I said, I've been a, a, a ambassador for the project for close to two years now and I couldn't be happier with the experience. I help out with a lot of the marketing and the media and the communications uh, in the project, which is great because it means that I get to be on the forefront of uh, helping uh, the community grow. And it really is fantastic. It's a global community, over 52 different countries involved now, um, and it just keeps growing. So, Okay, well, hopefully we can get this out and it'll continue to grow. Uh, you know, Dick, ever since Bitcoin became mainstream in the consciousness of people, there have always been comparisons between cryptocurrencies and precious metals like gold and silver. And we've seen supporters of cryptocurrencies basically knock, 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 keep knocking down gold and silver as the old way. And and those in the precious metals camp, you know, they get a bit upset and they have a bit of distrust in cryptocurrencies. And how did you see these two asset classes and which of the two are you more favorable towards? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why I'm so uh, amicable towards the load project is because it's taking uh, the world of, of uh, precious metals and marrying it to uh, the algorithm and um, and sort of the, the trust that blockchain provides. And, you know, it's interesting because I, I, I do talk to a lot of Bitcoin cryptocurrency maximalists. And, um, you know, while Bitcoin, there is a limited number of them, 
uh, as it becomes more and more expensive to mine, uh, the number of operations that can afford to keep mining Bitcoin um, and um, processing those transactions continues to decrease because it's expensive to run Bitcoin miners. And what ends up happening is over time, the number of nodes becomes more and more centralized. I think back in 2018, China had around 48% of all the Bitcoin nodes uh, that were processing transactions. And so like, there's this big argument of decentralization, but it doesn't really sound very decentralized to me. 48% of all the nodes processing this are coming from one country. And I don't mean say this to um, to dissent on Bitcoin. I love Bitcoin. I hold Bitcoin. But the point here is that Bitcoin maximalists are big enthusiasts on the idea that trust is enough. That trust is enough. It's an unbacked asset. You know, I can trust this computer. This computer removes the human error and it will all be fine because I have this trust in this system um, and the computer algorithms that back it. Now, um, I think what we've seen, at least with fiat currency, is just, you know, when you put your trust in something, there's no guarantee that it's going to be stable or that it's going to work out. We're seeing now a ton of instability all over the world with traditional fiat assets that are also not backed, just like Bitcoin is not backed, right? Um, but what is backed is precious metals. They have inherent value, whether it's gold or silver or even, uh, you know, uh, any of the other metals that you could possibly think of, right? There is utility uh, and function and purpose behind them, and they have served as money for thousands of years, right? Now, I understand that carrying around a chunk of gold in your pocket is probably not a very uh, effective means, you know, slap that on the counter, like, you know, uh, how does the average person break that down? Which is why the technolog uh, technological development of blockchain allows for a, such a seamless transition of the old world and the new. So I couldn't really say if I have a preference for the other, but um, but I, I see the merit in both. And I don't see the value of, um, of blockchain diminishing the importance of precious metals. Okay. Um, you, you mentioned the, the percentage of, of mining in uh, certain areas. And I, I believe I came across some articles last year where uh, – 55, 60% of mining was done in China. Why is this a significant uh, thing that we should understand? Well, um, uh, blockchains are, um, are known for being decentralized, right? Uh, they're made up of a series of computers that process the transactions and do what's called the mining, right? And it's this consensus algorithm uh, that, builds in that decentralization of that idea that no one entity is in control of uh, everything, right? Uh, getting away from that, you know, Federal Reserve type model um, that the that the US presently has. Now, um, in order for that system to truly work, that means that the the individuals, the entities that control the nodes, the, the processors uh, need to be as diverse uh, as well. Right. And so the less diversity there is and the more one entity uh, is the processor, what ends up happening is they actually can impact the blockchain. They, you know, they could potentially commit a 51 percent attack if they were all unified on the blockchain. So while blockchains are much safer than uh, a lot of traditional systems, they still have vulnerabilities. Right. So the diversity of those individuals controlling those nodes is something that's core to a blockchain. Do you see cryptocurrencies gaining greater prominence in the future with the role of gold and silver perhaps to decline? Mm, I, I don't really see that. I, I do see the prominence of cryptocurrencies rising. Um, I don't think it's avoidable after the whole COVID-19 pandemic that uh, the world's been going through. We've seen this big transition to cashless. Most places won't even take my $20 bills anymore. Uh, and so there's And so now people are looking at um, at cashless forms of payment, and it also encourages people to check out uh, blockchain and cryptocurrencies because um, because there's also a lot of instability in the world, and, and they're looking for alternatives and other investment vehicles, and so on and so forth. Now, um, precious metals, you know, as I mentioned earlier, they have utility, they have purpose, and they've acted as fantastic safe haven assets and stores of value for most of the world's history, right? That doesn't change just because blockchain has entered the game. Um, 
and in fact, because of uh, you know projects like um, like Load um, that that uh, have precious metals backed assets, it's just changing the way that we interact with these metals. Maybe uh, buy and trade these metals because really, what the blockchain is in its essence is a ledger, right? It's a documentation of the transaction and uh, accounting accountability of the actual asset. So if I say I'm giving you one AGX which is backed by one gram of silver, you can have the confidence that this is one audited and insured and vaulted gram of silver, right? And that's what a blockchain provides. So it changes the way uh, that we are accountable with the assets that we have. And that, if you ask me, helps uh, bring gold and silver um, into a new era where blockchain and um, you know decentralized assets are, are very prominent as well. So I see them helping each other. Can we know who the founders of load are because when when i go to the website it, it can be a, a bit difficult trying to find who the founders are and even what are their perhaps motivation for for starting load when it comes to um the founders of load um there's a reason why um you don't see that in there and really it's a group of people right it's uh it's a group of like-minded people and their vision their heart is in the idea that the world needs a return to honest money honest money that is backed by a precious metals asset, right? Uh, and they want to see that restored to the monetary system. There's other projects out there, competitors that are simply, you know, taking these commodities, putting them on an ERC-20 token, and just, you know, being like, let's trade them away. Um, but what Load is attempting to accomplish is a comprehensive uh, monetary system that integrates with all the traditional banking infrastructure and works as a store of value, a medium of exchange, and uh, unit of accountability, right? So uh, it's really trying to build the full wheelhouse and ecosystem. Um, and that's really the, what is at the heart of uh, load. The fact that it you can look out in North America, South America, uh, Europe, uh, and, I, and Asia as well. And there's a lot of financial instability going around right now. And when throughout history, we've looked at money that has been backed by precious metals assets what we've seen is inflation is considerably lower and people uh you know have greater benefit from that so that's really the core of what load is about is about bringing honest money back to a global uh community that really needs it okay great um what are the reasons for the Liechtenstein contact address for load for sure the the load one anstalt is um uh, for all intensive purposes, our headquarters. Um, uh, blockchain <laughs> blockchain regulations are almost as volatile as blockchain trading markets. You know, you wake up in a lot of jurisdictions one day and they're like, "Yeah, we love blockchain," and then you go to sleep or you go out for a drink, you come back and they're like, "No, no, you're no," you know. So uh, because of this, it's been very difficult to find clear and uh, concise regulation on blockchains and uh, blockchain programs. Uh, and, um, yeah, Liechtenstein does have that. They have a solid legal framework for where, uh, for us to operate within and for us to build a, uh, a base for us to work collaboratively work with regulators, uh, and bring them along on and on side to the projects. So, uh, that address is, is effectively the, the home of the load project, but we also are, uh, setting up shop in Austria. We have uh, off uh, offices in Cayman um, and as well as our team is spread out throughout the world uh, everywhere from, you know, Dubai to uh, London to Canada uh, where I presently am, uh, France and the United States and so on. So the team itself is quite distributed. Nicholas got to ask, why the decision to tokenize silver and not gold? Well, I'm, I'm actually glad that you uh, brought that up. And I'm really happy to say that we are in the final stages of releasing our own gold-backed asset as well, known as the AUX. And that will be coming out um, probably within the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. Um, but the reason that we started with silver is a couple of reasons, right? Uh, silver is a very industrial asset. Silver um, you know, has been suppressed. And for anyone that doesn't believe silver prices being suppressed, I highly encourage you to try and buy some silver bullion and then compare that premium to the spot price, uh, you know, which paints a very, very clear picture for you. Um, and uh, largely, it's also because 
silver is a more affordable than gold is. It's easier to get your hands on. And uh, while, mo uh, while gold is often considered uh, the money of kings, um, silver has always been the money of the people. And we want this project at its heart to be for the people, by the people, um, you know, and, and this whole program really, when you get down to it, is built by a group of people, a growing community of people that believe in the return of this honest money. So we felt that silver was, really was the best place to start. And I think we've done pretty well uh, with that positioning um, so far in the project. Yeah, you're starting to draw me into some uh, AGX there. <laughs> and I've I've read that uh load has a two token design where you have the load token and you also have that AGX coin. Can you give us an overview of what load is and why the two token system? It's a great question, especially for anybody who's just learning about the project for the first time. So um loads two and shortly three token system, um, because we've got that AUX coming in is uh, as such the load is for all intents and purposes is considered an investment vehicle it's classified as what's known as a perpetual bond and individuals can purchase this perpetual bond using um, investment grade gold or silver right uh, you can either buy it from one of our bullion partners or alternatively if you uh, you know have it sitting in your sock drawer and it's collecting dust sitting idle as we like to say uh, you can send that in or a portion of your stack into one of our uh, distributed vaults around the world. Um, and then in exchange, you will receive load tokens. Now, it's important to, to distinguish here. You are purchasing these assets, right? You are taking on, you are exchanging it for a bond. Um, but what the benefit of that is, is that every 52 days, load token holders receive what's called micro payouts. These are essentially uh, similar to dividends. Uh, that payout in the form of AGX, which um, is our silver-backed asset, where every single AGX coin is a gram of digital vaulted and insured silver that you can spend and treat like functional money anywhere in the world. Um, and that's essentially how the system works. The people who contribute their silver to the project uh, once we receive it, we give them their load tokens. We take that silver, and that silver becomes the backing for the AGX token, right? So this is what I mean when I say that this project is built uh, by a group of like-minded people who will have the desire to see um, to see silver and gold restored to the monetary system in a proper way, and that it is built for the people by the people, because uh, these individuals are contributing their own assets to become the backing for this money. Nicholas, what is the process for users to contribute their silver to load system? I mean, where do they go? What happens to the silver? Is it tested? And I think you mentioned it's it's insured. Yes. Um, so great question. Once again, uh, the easiest and best thing to always do is to head over to uh, load.one uh, to begin your sort of uh, investigation and registration process. If you want to learn more about the project, uh, we have um, our project paper ready and available on the website, but we also have a fantastic support team that, uh, that people can reach out to and engage with a real human being and get their questions answered um, in what is close to real time. Um, that would probably be uh, the, the first step. And then going through the actual registration funnel, it feels like everything else on the internet that you've registered for. But then you have to go passing what's called KYC. And for those who might not be familiar, it's called Know Your Client. And basically it's, it's protecting uh, the project and making sure that we know who's coming in, but it's also protecting you as an individual, right? Um, and so once you've passed uh, the KYC requirements, then you can go and contribute to load. Now there's a minimum of 100 ounces if you're if you're sending in your own silver. Um, however, if you are just looking to buy with a credit card, uh, the minimum contribution is around 10 grams worth of silver. So, uh, you know there's there's very little barrier to entry to participate in this program. If you just buy uh, via the credit card system, what's nice is that our bullion partner essentially. Uh, takes that purchase, exchanges it for physical silver. Uh, the entire project does not hold its assets in cash. It holds them in the actual metal. Uh, and then um, that metal is um, delivered to the nearest vault to it. Um, or if the uh, contributor has a preference, as we do have a variety of locations, um, 
it can ask for it to be sent to that um, that vault as well. If you're just delivering as well, um, our Boolean partner will contact you. Um, we do take coins, bars, rounds, all of that, as long as the investment, it is investment grade. Um, and then uh, they will give you specific shipping instructions and it, the process is the same. It hits, um, it goes to the vault, uh, it gets insured uh, and is tested and all of that. And then once we have confirmation, you'll then receive your load tokens. The delivery method does take um, a little bit longer because you're at kind of at the whims of the postal service, right? Of the, uh, of the um, shipping company that you choose to run with. Um, so uh, unfortunately, it's not as instantaneous as we'd like, but if you purchase with a credit card, um, you are very likely to receive your tokens in, in uh, a fast fashion. And we just, uh, the reason that we don't necessarily do that instantaneously in that moment is because we wanna make sure that all our you know, T's are crossed and all our I's are dotted, right? We wanna make sure that everything is accounted for and that we're being 100% accurate with our data because the thing about blockchains is, um, you know, the data is immutable, and, but that's only valuable if you got it right when you were putting it in the first time, right? So, um, yeah, that is the essential process for becoming a load contributor. But if you're just looking for digital silver, if you're still just looking for, uh, you know, digital silver money that you can send and spend in an alternative to fiat capital, then you can just, once you pass that registration process and downloaded our mobile wallet, you can just go ahead and purchase AGX directly and it will be instantaneously rewarded into your mobile wallet and you can send and spend it. Okay, great. Yeah, I was um, curious if uh, you accepted rounds and you said you do. Um, I can hear guys screaming out there, what about junk silver? Uh, unfortunately, not. Uh, junk silver uh, at this time. It's important that um, for us to maintain uh, consistency of value and again make exchanges for redemptions that all the silver is of the same caliber. Today our salaries and, and savings generally they're deposited within a bank and we know that we are not the owners of those deposits but we're creditors. Instead the deposits mm. yes, they're, they're a liability to the bank and we are owed the money that we give to them. When we say that the load token is a digital receipt for silver contributed by users into the load system, are they still the owners of the silver or are they now creditors like the example with the banks? So um, again, just to clarify how the process works, you're purchasing the bond with the silver. So you are no longer the owner of that asset. You've put that portion of your stack uh, into the, the load vaults um, to become the backing for the money that uh, the money of tomorrow, right? And um, you now hold this investment asset in exchange for in, in exchange for that. Um, and then um, when people go to purchase the AGX asset, um, they have 100% ownership of that asset and, and have the confidence that every single one of these assets is backed by the silver and is redeemable, right? So hopefully, hopefully that uh, creates a little bit of a clearer picture there. Um, we do have um, the ability to redeem that silver as well. You as an individual, as an AGX holder, get the ability to redeem that physical sil uh, that AGX token for physical uh, silver, I believe the minimum is 100 ounce bars, but you, alternatively, we do have shops and bullion dealers online where you can take and actually buy back um, silver, physical silver using the AGX token. So there's a couple ways to go from digital back into uh, the physical if that's what your desire is. Okay. And so again, it can be uh, coins, rounds, bars, LBMA bars as well? Yep. Yeah. How can users of the load system be assured that load is 100% backed by silver? And how do they know if the silver is even there? That's a great question. Transparency is a really, really important thing. Um, we have a transparency report that we publish. Um, and, it, uh, when, and it includes an audit of our vaults. And not just that, it also gives transparency as to budgets and the other activities that are going on within the projects that, you know, the average individual may not see because an operation like this is 
is actually colossal, right? There's a tremendous amount of work that that goes into it, and we want to do our best to uh, let people see and know how things are going on. Um, so when you are a member and you register, that transparency report sits right there in the dashboard, and you can and you can see for yourself. Um, we're going, we're still going through the process for this year's transparency report. Uh, we, because of European regulation, there is, uh, I think a very select few, uh, number of auditors, which are qualified to conduct the audit of our vaults. And so we're just going through that process for this year. Um, but as time goes on and as the platform grows, we want to find even more frequent and, uh, up-to-date ways of keeping our community engaged with the transparency side of the project and letting, so that they can have that confidence that the silver is there, the assets are there. Yeah, I think um, people will like that transparency and, and trust, they're, they're everything. Could you share with us more about how load token holders will receive payouts, how it works and how often does this happen? The way that the load token works with its payouts is, is as such. Uh, it's 5.25% of the premium um, multiplied by the amount of sales that uh, the project has or across all its assets uh, over the 52 period days. And then at the end of that 52 period of days, um, rewards are issued to the low token holders and divided proportionally among um, all the, the token holders based on the amounts they have, right? So if you own 1% of all load tokens and you get 1% of the payout, right? Um, so what's nice about this model is the fact that as sales continue to ramp up and we just had our best quarter ever as the sales continue to ramp up and grow bigger and the, the project gets that adoption, uh, and support that, um, that we know is coming, um, the payouts in the micro and the rewards continue to grow and grow and grow and grow. And this is the real value for low token holders. All of the payouts that individuals receive are in AGX. So they're, you're actually earning a passive uh, income, passive rewards in the form of silver, right? Which is, I think is pretty crazy. I think that's incredible, actually. I can't think of another program that really does that. Um, and, and so, um, you know, that's where a huge portion of the value of, of being a low token holder comes in is in these micro payouts and in these 52-day rewards. Okay. Uh, Nicholas, what happens when users redeem their load tokens for silver? How does it impact the amount of AGX coins issued? Right. So an important thing to distinguish is the fact that uh, you cannot redeem the load token for silver. Um, it is a security. It is a bond. It has been purchased. Um, and it is, it is not backed. The load token is not a backed asset. It's an investment asset, almost like a it's not a stock, but like the closest comparison you could have is to something like that, right? In a traditional sense. The redeemable assets are AGX and uh, now AUX, our gold back token, right? Um, and when somebody goes to redeem that, that asset, what happens is we destroy the, uh, the AGX that are presently sitting on uh, the blockchain. We destroy those tokens because we don't want to be in a situation where you have a fractional reserve system. We want every single one of our tokens to be um, to be accounted for and to be backed and to not be in a state of uh, flux, if you will. So when we redeem, uh, when individuals redeem silver, uh, those tokens are taken off the board. You know, new silver comes into the project um, and then new tokens are minted, right? And then this way, uh, it's allowed to expand and contract based on, um, you know, the amount of silver that's actually in the system. Why did the low team decide to use the Syscoin blockchain instead of the Ethereum blockchain, given that the ERC-20 standard already has a high adoption rate in the crypto space? That's a fantastic question. Uh, and it's really not a matter of uh, this or that. One of the great things about load that you're not seeing on many projects is the topic of interoperability, the ability to go between blockchains. Um, Syscoin has been a f and the and the blockchain foundry team have actually been a uh, a bedrock for us in bringing AGX to the world in a spendable fashion. The Syscoin block blockchain is like instantaneous transactions at real time speeds like you would have at a POS terminal. 
uh, and it was really built and designed for uh, asset-backed projects. So we just chose as our first blockchain to uh, to run with to be Syscoin. Now there's actually uh, a second ledger that uh, all our tokens go through first, and this is a private ledger known as Hyperledger. This is required so that we're compliant and with global regulations. Uh, so all tokens are first minted on this Hyperledger, and then, and you can think of this almost like a safety security deposit box of some fashion, right? Um, you know, it is 100% secure. If you make a mistake on the Hyperledger, uh, you know, we can we can fix that. Uh, once you transfer your assets over to the public blockchain, you're taking full responsibility and authority over that capital. Um, you know, it's like ha having a hundred dollar bill and then you drop it somewhere, right? And you can't go back to the bank and be like, oh, I lost my hundred. Can I get it back? Right. Doesn't work. Um, and that is sort of the metaphor between this hyperledger blockchain and um, and going onto a public network like Syscoin. Now, uh, we like to think of Syscoin as the uh, transactability, the send and spend asset, but uh, you know, we are exploring the concepts of also building a bridge to Ethereum where, uh, it, you know, potentially, um, you know, the ERC-20 tokens could be used to trade on exchanges. And the great part about all of this is that if you want to uh, go between um, Syscoin or Ethereum or uh, even Hyperledger, we are building a relay so that you can do that. So you can go to our relay, transition the assets into whatever blockchain makes sense for you, and then uh, carry on your way, right? And so we think that by creating this interoperability, what it's ultimately going to do is, is open the doors to adoption in a greater capacity by being accessible on most public blockchains, not just one. Okay. Uh, is it possible for an AGX coin to exist without... Uh without any silver in, in front of it or in back of it? Uh, no, I'm, that is the core, that is the core of the project there is that, um, that this is honest money and that, um, every AGX and every AUX is backed. Um, AGX is backed by one gram of silver, yeah. every single one of those tokens, whereas, uh, AUX will be backed by, uh, one milligram of gold. Okay. Um, yes. Okay, so yeah, I asked that question because we we see some uh, gold backed tokens that that are backed by gold from mints, uh, which I guess if you look at it, it's more like um it's a uh, somewhere down the road that mint may mint your gold coin, but it doesn't exist here and now today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is an app uh, because um, the project's uh, reserves are entirely built on people who are contributing already existing physical metal. To the project, um, you can have that confidence that that asset is already in existence and it's in that vault and it's in security and it's yours. You own it. Yeah, I mean that that's good to know because we we saw what happened, you know, just a month back or so when um, there was no shipments going around, no gold, no silver, and I mean if you're holding a token at that time, you know, you you couldn't redeem your your token for physical gold. So it's no. right. So it's probably something that's that's in the back of. Of people's minds but um I, I guess with that question who are the entities that are part of the load bullion dealers alliance for sure so we have uh degusa and sharps pixley uh which have been around for a very long time uh they've got a very deep network and we're, um, we're very happy to be partnered with them and then we also have um international gold vault which is our select bullion partner uh, Rob is the gentleman who will pick up the phone to talk to you and make sure that either your, your silver is delivered safely to the vault or, uh, you can buy from his existing, um, his existing shops, uh, supply and contribute them to the vault. So at the moment, those are, um, the three major players involved in our, uh, Boolean Dealers Alliance. But what's great is because of the way the Boolean De uh, Dealers Alliance is designed, um, from a business perspective, uh, you know, we make it easy so that any Boolean uh, dealer or individual who's interested in participating in this program can come to us and, uh, and plug in. And that's the idea is that as this project grows, more and more and more um, providers are going to come online and the system becomes more and more and more decentralized as, as time goes on. Uh, and you'll you'll see that the project is largely based around this com uh, concept of making it as distributed as it possibly can be to create what is a more holistic um, economic system. Good stuff. 
Uh, Nicholas, what's the latest update on how widely accepted is the AJX coin for payment? I mean, can I buy a cup of coffee in Singapore with it yet? Great question. So we do have our uh, AGX or load markets websites, uh, agxmarkets.com or loadmarkets.com lead you to the same place. Um, and from here, you have a whole host of uh, merchants that are offering their online services uh, and products uh, for purchase using our assets. Now, of course, to get true adoption, we got to be able to spend and spend this like we could uh, any other fiat currency, which is why I'm really happy to say that we are now in the testing stages for our very first card program, uh, debit card program, which would mean that you would have the ability to take these assets and spend them at a grocery store, get them for that cup of coffee in Singapore, um, you know, fill up your car with gas and, and live your life using this uh, precious metals backed money the same way you could with fiat back currency. So we're just in the testing stages of this card now, and it will very quickly be going out to the public. So, uh, you know, we're really excited to be to be coming into um, this stage of the project's life cycle because we think once this is accessible, uh, it's a no-brainer, right? Okay. Can you share with us more about Load Ambassadors and why David Morgan is one? How did he get involved? Um, David Morgan, I think, uh, I don't know if he considers himself a founder, but I know he is good friends of some of the core people who were at the very, very start of the project. And, um, you know, I think it largely is a, is an issue of, or not even an issue. It's a, it's a matter of, um, alignment and vision and understanding the common goal and the, in the common desire uh, to see this asset that has been tested and tried and proven restored to its glory as the money of the people all over the world, right? And, you know, in talking with David and engaging with David, he gets it. He understands the value of it. He understands why we need this. And so that is why I believe, I believe that he is such an enthusiastic uh, a, a ambassador for the project and why he, uh, you know, goes to shows and is willing to uh, sing our praises. And, you know, we're very, very grateful to have him, the silver guru himself. I mean, what better, <laughs> what better, uh, individual could you possibly have to, to validate your system? So how can our viewers learn more about the load project, get involved with load and get some AGX coins? Absolutely. So, uh, as I said before, best place uh, that you should start is definitely go to uh, load dot one. Um, and this website is going to give you all the tools you need to learn about the project, uh, chat support that will answer you in close to real time. Uh, and then additionally, we also have our mobile wallet available in the app and uh, in the Apple and Android stores. Um, and once you have uh, these, uh, the mobile wallet and you've got a member's account from the website, uh, and you've gone through the KYC process, then it's as easy as going over to the buy load or the buy AGX section and uh, just purchasing what is right for you uh, for um, for digital silver and digital gold and, and hopefully as a contributor to load as well, right? Um, and that it's really that easy. It's like a one, two, three step process to getting going. Um, but of course, if you do have any any trouble, that's that's why our support team is there is to to help bring you along and um, make you feel comfortable with it. We know we talk to a lot of um, older investors who are for them is probably their first experience with the blockchain and cryptocurrency. And uh, I gotta say, like in general, blockchain and cryptocurrencies are not user friendly. You know, they're complicated and they can be confusing. And part of what we try to do with our dashboard and with our experiences make that experience uh of of getting these digital assets um as easy to understand and as easy to use as possible and make it feel like traditional um like the traditional banking software that we already use okay i mean would you say most guys who are who are involved in load or agx coin would they be the older crowd or or the younger crowd well, you know, I think we're pretty lucky we have a pretty diverse group of people, right? You know, 52 different countries um you know, it's uh, it would be hard not to have a mix of people. Um, you know, I would say that there is definitely a solid portion of our community who are longtime uh, silver and gold enthusiasts, um, individuals like David Morgan, who have been championing the cause that we're talking about for a long time. Right. And now they're seeing 
this vision come to fruition and they're putting their weight behind it, right? When they contribute their silver. So there is a good chunk of uh, members of our community who fulfill that demographic, but there are also individuals like me, like myself, who are uh, a little bit younger uh, and maybe even still learning about the, the impacts of precious metals and what honest and good money is uh, that are looking for alternatives or that are looking for a hedge against all the volatility that I see in the world uh, and, and wanting to protect the wealth that I'm building for myself, right? So um, I would say it's a pretty, it's a very diverse um, community. Okay, Nicholas Pruton will be sure to send guys your way and um, wish you all the best with the load project and AJX coin. And we hope we can get you on again sometime. I would love to come back. Thank you again so much for joining us. And, you know, if you're open to it, we'd always love to have you on AGXM as well. Sure, will do. Thanks again, Nicholas. We'll be in touch. Take care. That was Nick Proton, brand ambassador of the Load Token Project. For more information on Load, please visit the Load.one website. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the SBTV channel to be updated on new content. And do also check out the SBTV podcast on iTunes and Spotify.